Starliner spacecraft and arrived at the space station on June 6th. And it looks like we are beginning to get some views inside the spacecraft um, overlooking the shoulders of the crew on board Dragon. We'll continue to bring you those views um, throughout the day and, and views throughout Splashdown um, this morning or this afternoon, rather. Uh, but to, to jump back into a little bit more about uh, Sunny, she became an Expedition 7172 crew member and she logged 286 days in space on this mission. But she actually has a total of 608 days in space, the second most time in space by a U.S. astronaut. Former NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson ranks first for the U.S. with 675 days in space. She conducted two spacewalks and has completed nine over the course of her career for a total of 62 hours and six minutes of spacewalking time. She ranks fourth on the list of cumulative time spacewalking by a female astronaut. And she has flown on four different spacecraft types, including the Space Shuttle, Soyuz, Starliner, and now Dragon. Previously, she served on Expedition 14 and 15 in 2006 and 2007, and again, again with Expedition 32 and 33 in 2012. She's a retired U.S. Navy captain and is a proud graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy. NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore is also serving as a mission specialist today. This is his third space flight and, just like Sunny, logged 286 days in space. He conducted one spacewalk and completed five over the course of his career, earning him a total spacewalking time of 21 hours, two minutes. He's flown on four different spacecraft types throughout his career, the Space Shuttle, Soyuz, Starliner, and now Dragon. Previously, the Mount Juliet, Tennessee native served on STS-129 in 2009 and Expedition 41 and 42 from 2014 to 2015. Wilmore is also retired, uh, a retired captain in the U.S. Navy. And Alexander Gorbanov is a third mission specialist serving on today's mission. Crew 9 was his very first space flight to the space station, earning him a total of 171 days in space over the course of his career. Gorbanov, along with Nick Haig, saw the arrival of four visiting vehicles and saw the departure of four as well. The duo orbited the Earth more than 2,700 times during their mission. Before his cosmonaut selection in 2018, Gorbanov worked as an engineer for a rocket space corporation and helped support cargo spacecraft launches from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. To prepare for upcoming events, Dragon is currently doing a couple of things autonomously. First, it's isolating the thermal control system fluid loops from the radiator. This system is what will help keep the internal temperature of Dragon very comfortable for Nick, Sonny, Butch, and Alexander during the reentry phase. Dragon is also initiating separation of the claw mechanism, which will terminate data, power, and fluid connections between the spacecraft and the trunk in preparation for that trunk separation that I mentioned earlier. Now, as we saw before, we are hoping to get more views inside of the Dragon capsule. We will bring those, of course, we want to see more of our four crew members. Uh, but now a bit more of the Dragon Freedom capsule. Uh, it has flown on several missions for NASA. It first launched April 27, 2022. Uh, to the International Space Station on NASA's SpaceX Crew-4 mission. It was subsequently used for two private spaceflight missions to the space station for Axiom Space, uh, Axiom Mission 2 in May 2023 and Axiom Mission 3 in January of 2024. And of course, Crew-9 launched uh, last year, is September 28th. Uh, so, yeah, a little bit about the Dragon Freedom capsule here, a view that we have uh, once again between uh, the shoulders of Commander Nick Haig, who is on the left-hand side of your screen there, and Mission Specialist Alexander Gorbanov there on the right. That's right, Kate. And the next major milestone that we're looking ahead towards this afternoon is claw separation. We're targeting that claw separation at 2.05 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon, so less than 10 minutes from now. Continuing to get some views inside Dragon Freedom. Uh, to the far left there is NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore. And as you can see, the crew is suited up in their space suits. Um, they are suited up in what we call dynamic phases of flight. So when they launch, when they dock, when they undock, when they return back for splashdown. We might hear some call-outs on, on 
uh, the loops about putting their visors down. That will happen just prior to deorbit burn. And you'll hear us pause when some of those communications happen. That's because we want to make sure that we are relaying the best information to you all and so that you hear it as well. Um, so if you do hear us pause, that is, that is what we're doing. You also see they have their on there. And I know the gloves are pretty unique on the Dragon spacesuits, right? They're custom created? Yes. Um, the spacesuit overall is custom fit for each astronaut. Um, these gloves enable usage of the touchscreen panels that they have in front of them. Um, we can't see it from this view, but that view we saw earlier uh, between um, Alexander Gorbanov and Nick Haig, that is a touchscreen. It allows the crew to uh, monitor everything that Dragon is doing along with those uh, tablets that they have there on their legs. So yeah, the, the spacesuit itself is intended to act as a mini spaceship, if you will, as once the, the visors are closed, it is a able to maintain um, a pressure in the unlikely event of a depressurization event uh, for Dragon. So there we can see those screens I was talking about. So there in the center, we've got the location tracker as well as on the left-hand side, it's mapping out the operations that Dragon uh, is executing. The crew has to remain well informed 